you scared me. Did you just roll your eyes at me? <laughs> Welcome to Internet Roundup. I'm Chuck, and that's Josh. And uh, this is a little show we do once a week in the audio studio stuff you should know. That's right. Where we look up things on the internet and talk about them. Things that capture our fancy. That's right. And you found this neat thing about Maccas. About what? Maccas. Apparently that's what they call McDonald's in Australia. Is that right? That's what it says in that quote at the bottom. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um. Really? Yeah. Huh. Well, uh, I found this from The Consumerist, which is a great website. Okay. Um, and it's about a an anonymous art artist from Melbourne, I believe, who put a McDonald's sign, or a what sign? Maccas. Sign um, in the middle of the Australian outback. A 50-foot McDonald's sign. That lights up at night. Yeah, I and mean, it, it's a real deal. It has the McDonald's logo, and it says, Opening Soon. And it is in the <laughs> middle of nowhere. Yeah, it's pretty funny. It's 124 miles inside the desert from the edge of this park called the Simpson Desert Re- Regional Reserve. Yeah, or I guess we should say, uh, should say it was there because the South Australian government sent a park ranger on a 12-hour trip to yeah. take down the sign. Yeah. I imagine he needed, uh, he needed help. To take down the sign? A 50-foot sign? Hacksaw and a chain. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but um, they did think it was kind of funny. They did. They they said they that they could, mad. they could see how it, it could be viewed as funny. Coming soon, and it's clearly a statement about the ubiquity of McDonald's. It's so postmodern. It's so postmodern. <laughs> Very meta. So with um, the the Australian authorities did make a pretty good point. They said that knowing that the sign was out there, it would just serve as like a beacon to people yeah. who would drive off of the trails onto this preserved land. Yeah. And really screw things up. Just to get a selfie. Yeah. Sure. But all that needed to happen was this sign be placed in the outback and a picture of it be made and point made. Yeah. And that that final quote from- um, Oh, I see now. Maccas. Yeah. Who was was it that said that? Um, The uh, representative from a hotel. Oh, okay. He said, uh, now I reckon the Maccas sign is the number one picture. (laughs) Because <laughs> before they were talking about a, a pub and a hotel being the big draw. That was great. Say it again. Now I reckon the Mecca sign is the number one picture. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. That's a great Murray. Thanks. So uh, I thought it was kind of great. Sort of Banksy-esque. It is. It's no dismal land, but man. Boy, I'd love to go there. I have, uh, I've not seen much of it. Uh, I posted a thing about it the other day. It's, oh, I it's didn't pretty click neat. through. Yeah. Where is it? Is it in the? Is it in the UK? Yeah, I think so. Right, Casey's nodding to my left eyeball. Yeah. <laughs> um. You, then you sent this, Josh. This is neato. This is for <laughs> mental floss, wasn't it? Yeah, the unsinkable Violet Jessup. I had never heard of this woman, and it turns out she <clears throat> had uh, a habit of living through things that she might not should have lived through. Yeah, through ocean going. Tragedies and catastrophes. Yeah, several. Uh, she started out as a, I guess, an attendant of some sort. A stewardess. On the Olympic, back when she was 23. The RMS Olympic. And the Olympic ran into another ship called the HMS Hawk, and neither one that sank. Happen? I, uh, yeah, I guess, but I mean, those things are big, and you have, I know they're hard, you can't just steer them on a dime. Right. But I think surely, that's the issue. surely they would see it, I guess not. So they ran into each other. Neither ship sank, yeah. but I mean, close enough call for most people, right? Sure. So a few years after that, um, she was on another ship that you may have heard of called the Titanic. The Titanic. I believe she was a uh, passenger on the ship at that point. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, she eventually got on lifeboat uh, number 16, mm-hmm. and lucky for her, lifeboat number 16 did quite well, and she lived through that. Yes, and um, the baby was given to her that she cared for oh, yeah? and helped reunite the baby with its parents on the Carpathia, which rescued Titanic survivors. Oh, I thought she was like, that's my baby. That's my baby now. <laughs> it got weird. Um, uh, and then finally, uh, the Britannic crash of 1916 hit a mine and started going down super fast, and she actually had to jump overboard 
was almost struck by one of the propellers that was out of the water. That's right. Definitely the worst crash for her personally, but she won uh, the lottery of life and lived. She really did. Once again. So was that the last one? Yeah. What was interesting, though, is the Titanic, the Britannic, and the Olympic were all sister ships. Oh. Which is makes the whole thing even creepier. Conspiracy? No. No. <laughs> no, but isn't that interesting? This lady survived three ocean catastrophes. Yeah. And all the, uh, the ships were also related. Yeah, and she also survived uh, tuberculosis when she was a kid. And six of her eight siblings died young. Uh, these were dangerous, tenuous times. Especially for her. For Violet Jessup. And she actually lived to be a ripe old 84 years old when she finally died uh, when the love boat sank. (laughs) She was on the poop cruise. Terrible. No, she died of congestive heart failure. uh, And she continued to be a stewardess uh, until 1950. Which then wrote a memoir. As a stewardess, she was a um, a nurse, I believe. Oh, okay. Is that what that red cross on her dress is? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Looks pretty good. Yeah. Uh, so good for her, and probably not movie worthy. Maybe short uh, subject. Short subject documentary. It'd just be her like running from an explosion, being like, "Not again," <laughs> you yeah. know, like Bruce Willis. Sure. You got anything well, else? No, that's fine. All right, it's done. Well, that's it for Internet Roundup this week, and uh, tune in next week, and we will enlighten you even further mm-hmm. with stories, both frightening and exhilarating. That's right.